Hey everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. You know I've got to say it. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. No matter where you are in the world, you are listening to Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. It's a great day. Many blessings. I hope you woke up thankful today. A big shout out to music artist L. Baez. Uh, thank you for the video. Thank you for the shout out. If you haven't gone to her TikTok, it's L E L L E underscore B A E Z. Uh, she was listening to her interview with me on the radio, and she did a video and. It's it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's it's what I woke up to today, and I took it as a huge sign. And I gave her a call, thanking her every day. I am constantly reminded, and I'm enjoying these reminders to remain where I'm going, in the direction I'm going, and more importantly, is to trust myself to know that I am capable. I am able. I'm determined and I'm passionate about where I'm at in life. And I hope you are too. So remember that very, very much. You know, give a call to a friend, go out to lunch, contact your parents if you haven't talked to them in a while, your brother, your sister, see your nieces or nephews, take yourself out to lunch, uh, take a bath, whatever it is. Trust yourself, know that you are worthy. And know that you are in control of your life one way or another, even if you've got to write it down. And I've been doing that as well, whether it's what you're grateful for, you know, what you plan on doing. If you want to take two hours out of your day, do some grocery shopping, get some gas, stop at the salon, uh, you know, head on over to your favorite cafe. I do that sometimes. I'll drive up to uh, Summerlin and go to Leon Cafe and I enjoy having you know, an afternoon cappuccino and watching the pigeons and, and the birds and, you know, looking at the water fountain and just do something very, very easy and simple. Just, just be graceful about it. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your entire day today. And one thing I'm going to do also, I haven't done in three days is get my butt to the gym. <laughs> Uh, we've got today, very excited about this, honored. We've got Naomi Grossman. You know her very well. You know, she was a 2018 Primetime Emmy nominee for Outstanding Actress in a short form comedy or drama for her role in and uh, Control Alt Delete. Um, she's been on American Horror Story. She's in, uh, you know, Many, many films, and I've got the list. It's it's huge. I mean, you guys see this, right? <laughs> I mean, wow, what what accolades here. Um, being cast in a role, uh, The Best of 2012, uh, fans may also recognize her from cameos in the following features, uh, One Bedroom, Table for Three, The Chair, Sky Sharks. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. I You know, some of these... I don't think I've even watched. I'm going to have to either go on Amazon or I'm going to be asking Naomi where I can see some of these films. But the titles in itself look incredible. She's beautiful. Have you seen that photo? We're going to be sharing more on socials. Uh, Power 98.5 Radio is the Instagram page. Uh, also, Model Me VIP have been asked. Um, uh 
Teresa asked me yesterday in the DM, yes, Model Me VIP is part of Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We highlight the best of the best. Most important clips from my interviews are on the Instagram page, also the Facebook page, so Model Me VIP. It used to be a reality TV show, something I created back in 2017, 2018. That was to be on the local CW in Las Vegas. Uh, it was also part of the fashion world. It was also the time when I was doing media coverage um, uh, for Project Runway. I was representing Charles uh, Joseph Charles Poley uh, from season 14 at that time. And that's where it began, uh, initially 2015, and then worked its way up. So um, it is primarily designated to be the best of the best of highlighting uh, clips from all of my interviews. With that being said, Naomi, good morning, wherever you are. Are you in L.A. right now? I am in L.A. Good morning. We are in the <laughs> same time zone. Normally, I'm back east in the New Jersey, New York area. However, I'm in Vegas, so it is 11.08 our time, and it's beautiful outside. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Talk- I love your message. It's beautiful every day outside in your world, I have a feeling. It is. I'm going to say that. I don't miss New Jersey, New York weather uh, because I live 40 minutes outside of Manhattan, but on the New Jersey side in the country part. Uh, It's it's colder a lot longer in New Jersey. Our winters are much longer in New Jersey. I believe we have the longest season for winter than any other season. Uh, Fall is like a fart. It's here and gone within like, a month, a month and a half, and then winter shows up. And then we've got winter can go all the way into my birthday month of April. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like uh, our summer was really quick this year. Like, it kind of didn't come till July, and it only stayed through maybe August. Um, but even then, we, we're not really having a fall. Like, it's not like we see leaves change, you know what I mean? It's not... <laughs> it just goes from like summer to all of a sudden like ugh, June gloom again, you know. What's incredible is I never thought that LA could get cold. I yeah. always assume it was a borderline like maybe a Palm Springs but not so like deep low desert, but I I I'm just surprised by the fact that you can have diversity in your weather out there. Oh yeah. People don't realize they, yeah, they think it's like, they think like palm trees and it's like Florida. And I'm like, no, we have similar trees and that's kind of the end. <laughs> What's also impressive, Naomi, is humidity. I, I assumed oh, yeah. it was dry. You guys get some crazy humidity out there. <gasps> Woo! Well, again, not like Florida. No, 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 no. Nothing can compare yeah, to no. Florida. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Is Has L.A. been your home for a long time, or where are you originally from? It is. Um, I am originally from Denver, Colorado, although uh, my parents uh, moved to New Mexico when I uh, left the nest. So I, in my shows, for example, I have a, you know, a couple one-woman shows, and I, I always – Say I'm from Taos, New Mexico, because it's just, frankly, a more interesting place to be from. But, um, and and mostly, you know, I I, I needed to pick a place to be from. Like, it's it's confusing and not terribly interesting to to viewers of the shows, that is, uh, to be like, oh, wait, is she from there? You know, but I'm telling you, um, I'm originally from Colorado, although people often confuse me for a New Yorker. I don't know if that's a... I think coming from them, it's usually a compliment. Although I'll be honest, people in Colorado don't necessarily think that is a compliment. But <laughs> I understand the spirit in which it's given. Um, so yeah, my 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 parents now. Uh, my my mom is in New Mexico. My dad is in Uruguay, South America. So that's kind of where I go home to. Um, I uh, spent some time in Argentina in high school as an exchange student, then went on to Chicago where I was a theater major at Northwestern and then moved right out to LA. I four years of winter in Chicago and I was done. I was <laughs> ready for, for some palm trees and 
Florida humidity out here in uh, in California. Yeah, I'm going to say that what's impressive is how you went from Colorado to L.A. I lived in, for a very short time, Evans, Colorado, which is maybe about an hour north of Denver. I Mm -hmm. I was like literally less than an hour to the Stanley Hotel, which I enjoyed very much. I got a press media pass to uh, experience that very much. Got to see live elk. I got to see live, um, oh my goodness, uh, Naomi, um, alpaca. I They're tall. Oh, wow. I couldn't believe how huge alpaca are. Yeah. How anyone well, would want them cool. for a pet. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine, no. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to honestly say that uh, also being from the East Coast to assume you're from uh, New York, I'm going to say for us, it's a compliment because the way we as someone from the East Coast were to recognize someone that would potentially be or have the vibe and energy of being from the East Coast feels as though they got they, they've got it together. They know what they're doing. We're not going to be dealing with nonsense. Um, they're put together in some way, shape or form. It's a huge comment coming from from someone who's from back east. Yeah. No, I totally get that. And uh, because like I said, it it depends on who's saying it, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and like I said, they're usually New Yorkers. And I think they kind of recognize exactly what you said. I'm I'm a straight shooter. I'm I I don't waste time. I don't let grass grow. I, you know, I get get it done. And, um, and, and those are all, you know, the thing is where I'm from, like, you don't have to be from the East coast to be all those things. But I think, um, New Yorkers often kind of, um, assume you must, and, and that's not true, but, um, (laughs) well, it's a generalization, let's face it, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think those, um, stereotypes are, there's a reason for them sometimes, but they're not entirely fair, obviously. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. Uh, you, what I enjoy and appreciate about you, and just so everyone knows, uh, we've got Naomi Gr- Naomi Grossman with us today. Very excited about this. Want to give a big shout out to Robert Michael. I just had him on my show most recently. He's the one that set this up. He came out with the new movie Oblivious. I yet have not watched it. Um, uh, Naomi, you're part of the film. You got to enjoy the entire experience. What I would like to know is you've been in the industry for a long time. You've got a a long history of credible uh, you know, assets and resources, uh, part of your resume. Do you feel that the industry is moving in a better direction for actors and actresses that are up and coming, breaking out? Or are there areas that you would like to see as a professional to get better uh, when we think of um, fairness or, you know, job opportunities? I see things as a publicist, as a journalist and a media personality. Is there anything you would like to share, uh, you know, being the one that's in front of the camera that you feel is working in your best interest? Do you you feeling, you know, passionate to be in this industry for another 50 years? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't see myself anywhere else. I, I don't know where I would be if not in this industry. Um, uh, you know, it's really hard to say. I think um, things are changing so quickly right now that I could answer this question, but I might date myself because, um because like I said, things are changing just so fast. Uh, for example, AI, I think is really scary. I think, um, you know, I mean, that's what we're on strike about, uh, in part. And so hopefully we'll come to some, you know, resolution on that soon. Um, but that is a direction that I think is, uh, really scary. Um, And I would just as soon (laughs) put a complete stop to, Um, you know, in other ways, I feel like this is a really great time. Like uh, we have all the tools necessary to make it happen for ourselves. I mean, we have little, you know, 
m movie making machines in our in all of our pockets like there's no reason we're only limited by our own imagination uh, at this point um, you know assuming you have a phone and or Wi-Fi like there's nothing keeping you from you know creating your own opportunities which you know when I first started out like uh, you know, YouTube wasn't even still a thing. It wasn't even a thing yet. So um, the fact that we have all these platforms um, f an ability to just put out our own content, I think is really empowering. I mean, that's it's one of the few things I, I really, really hate about the profession of you know, being an actor is that in many cases, you're kind of at the mercy of others. You're kind of you need casting you need producers you need um others to to put you in their projects and thankfully uh you know like i said we can put ourselves in our own projects and that's that's great but um and so in that regard i think we're going in a we're, i i love the direction we're going in and i i only wish um you know we <laughs> i think i i think i kind of got a a late I don't want to say late start because I started early. I got my SAG card on my 15th birthday, uh, which was, you know, millions of years ago. But, um, you know, it took me like a good 22 years. It wasn't until I was 37 years old that I actually, you know, made SAG insurance. Like I just wasn't getting cast in a traditional way. And again, that was because I was kind of waiting for others to make it happen for me in spite of being a, um, you know, <laughs> a, a a, a New York like uh, go getter, um, and that's just because those, uh, you know, those op those platforms, those opportunities didn't even exist. So now that they do, I mean, I think we're very lucky. As a woman, and thank you for that. It, it's I can hear the passion, I can hear the conviction uh, in your voice, and how well put together you are. And just know this: you're not old. Um, I'm actually older than you. Um, I was born one year before you. Uh, but uh, but you look amazing. I think and believe you are timeless. I'm not I'm not saying this in a BS way. I believe you're timeless. You've got incredible energy. You are literally stunning. When you sent me those photos, I was like, wow. And uh, you remind me of. Um, Pat Benatar a little bit. There's something very fiery and, and exhilarating and captivating and alluring about you that's got that Pat Benatar type of flair. And if any of you know who she is or don't, you know, it does just Google her and you're going to be like, okay, and then go listen to her music. I mean, she's just phenomenal and timeless. I would love to, um, I would love to see a script. Uh, you write a script, you produce a movie, maybe an indie movie, something that's going to, you know, become a South by Southwest, you know, award winning uh, mini film, whatever it is. The only thing I have to say is you should never be typecast and you should be able to. And I hope that you have whatever opportunities and roles that you want to wear. Honestly, you know, just like the TV show, This Is Us, I could see you on that. I could see you doing a, um, you know, uh, you know, what was that show? Um, you know, where Roseanne Barr was, and I mean this, you know, with all due respect, like a, a comedy show, something to where you're, you're in a family sitcom. I believe I'm going to close by saying and, you know, you know, uh, follow up if you like Naomi of what I'm saying to you, mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want to do. And mm -hmm. I believe what I would like to see change has to change is other people stop controlling your narrative. That is where it needs to begin first. Yeah, I agree. Obviously. Um, but I also think you could add to that kind of what you'd said to at the very beginning about, you know, waking up grateful and going to bed gro grateful. And, um, and if you can just kind of get out of your own way sometimes, you know what I mean? I feel like uh, some oftentimes, you know, if I were to tell if I were to tell my younger self some piece of advice, it would be, you know, 
just let it go. Like, don't, you know, you don't have to micromanage the universe. You, you do what you, you know, have your eyes on the prize, uh, you know, position yourself in the right place and, you know, be prepared and then, you know, kind of let it go. Uh, in fact, I had a, a, a little aha moment yesterday in yoga. I'm, I'm a really avid, you know, a very dedicated yogi. And I have been literally physically flailing myself into handstands for about 23 years to no avail. And finally, I'm at a point where I'm actually starting to stick it. And it's very, very exciting. And when I first started to do it, it was like magic. It felt like, oh my God, like the stars aligned. Like how did, how, I, I, I never felt like I could actually duplicate it. But now I've realized, oh, when I put my hands in the right place and my shoulders in the right place and my wrists in the right place and my gaze in the right place, and you know what I mean? When everything is in the right place, it just flows. It just happens. And I, that's when I realized, oh, like life, you know, I think I've been flailing in my acting career forever. And then somehow, like I was just in the right place. I positioned myself properly. And I, you know, and, and when I say right place, I mean, uh, not just uh, the, not just right, right place, right time, although that's obviously a thing as well, but, you know, emotionally the right place, uh, intellectually the right place, like in, in every way. Um, I think, you know, if, if, if we can just kind of get out of our own way, like you said, you know, yes, we have to prepare ourselves and be, um, you know, as, uh, what do they say? luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yes. Uh, you know, prepare yourself for that opportunity, but we can't, we can't really uh, micromanage when uh, opportunity strikes. And that's the point when we really have to kind of trust, you know, trust the universe, trust ourselves, trust, uh, that things are going to happen. And I, I just think I really responded to the first part of your, um, you know, your talk there at the beginning where you're talking about just sort of t trusting. I love that. You and I've been on this earth long enough to where something eventually has to give because <laughs> we've learned being in one volume, one tone mm -hmm. is not going to work. And it's not just about how life changes you know, you, you are your own universe. I feel that you know this. You are your own universe. You're in your own body and embodiment of evolution. And what you do, what you eat, like you when you're doing yoga, how you are really being adventurous in a joyful <laughs> way, in an excited way to find out more about what you're capable of without having to measure. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary. It's why we are human and it's why we have these experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and that's what I took away when you were sharing about the yoga. It's it, you did away. There was no measuring tape. There was nothing there to criticize, analyze, or judge. You're in, you were in your happy place. You were purely in your own vibe and vibration. Well, yeah. I mean, and you have to be. Like, life is too short, um, even for us who've been around forever, to spend even a second doing something we don't love. So I'm all about that. And that's, that's the secret to looking young. You know what I mean? Like... Oof, I, I, I love, I love that. In fact, that is for me, the benchmark of success. Like people say like, when was it when you felt you made it? Like, honestly, like I've had a lot of really amazing things happen to me. I was number one on IMDb. I mean, there was that Emmy nom you mentioned. There, those are all great. But the day I was able to quit my 
day job as a Spanish teacher and, and just do what I wanted, like being able to be the boss of my own time and not, you know, conjugate verbs for a living. Like when I could just, you know, not spend a, you know, only do what I wanted with my time was, I mean, that's it. That's, that's success. So, um, you know, I, we're not always that fortunate, but I think at the same time, if, if you're not happy in what you're doing, like find, find something that does make you happy and make sure you're getting enough of that a day, you know, that'll keep the doctor away anyway. <laughs> Here's something that's very interesting. And I definitely am, I'm excited. I, I found this, um, I lived in in uh, the universe brought me to Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was working with and representing David Geis, who at the time was a 20 year Broadway director, worked on cats and everything. I'm going to read something here to you. Becoming okay. a familiar face in theater and on screen. Naomi Grossman is no stranger to the little big state of New Mexico. Grossman calls Taos home while she grew up in Denver, her parents honeymooned in Taos, in Taos and always kept a place there. Every long weekend, the family would go to the Taos house. And when Grossman left the nest, they moved there permanently. She has much love for New Mexico and is excited to be dropping in for the Santa Fe Comic Con. This was dated back in 2014. To bring up to speed, are your parents still in Taos? I, I I was in Taos. I know that drive very well. I was there several times. Where is life now for you and your connection to Taos, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and with your family? Hmm. Okay, I can tell you. Um, oh, that, that was an amazing like whole rundown of my life. I was like, wow, where is this coming from? <laughs> um so my mom is still there. She's basically the mayor. I joke, uh, of course, she's not actually the mayor, but I mean, she's, she's 84 years old and just running the place. I'm telling you. Um, uh, I'm sad to say my parents did divorce. Uh, and my dad has since, um, they, they divorced after 44 years of marriage. So, you know, at least I'm getting some like, comedy out of this, you know, unfor unfortunate events. Uh, my dad from there moved to Argentina and then Uruguay. So he, he keeps a place in Argentina, but he's primarily in Punta del Este, Uruguay, which on one hand works for me because my goodness, what a cool place to have to, you know, go home to. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously I, I, would like them to be together. And I really wish they hadn't divorced on my birthday, but that's a whole other story. Um, uh, I'm going to be actually back in Taos uh, soon. I'll be there uh, for the holidays, of course, but I'm actually taking my new show, American Horror Story, uh, which we'll be reprising um, there at the Wildflower, uh, Wildflower Theater in Taos um, prior to a... Uh, off Broadway uh, uh, review uh, will be uh, it's going to New York in January so we haven't actually officially uh, announced that I guess I just did but um, yeah we've got some really exciting things ahead and uh, kind of excited to call Taos our you know our uh, rehearsal prep place uh, you know how Broadway shows <laughs> go to Maryland first. Um, we're, 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 we're going to New Mexico first. So that, that should be fun. I'm excited for you about that. You've, you've got now my private personal number. Um, I, I could have given you the studio number and I'm like, no, we're going to have her have my private number. So you call Aww. me anytime, anything you want to talk about at all. would well, love to have you on. This is exciting. Um, I, you ever have a premiere or doing anything with this, I would love to come and support you. I mean, I'll, I have no problem getting a plane ticket, driving, whatever it is. I'm excited uh, about this for you. And I want to thank you for sharing what you shared with me. And Well, you're welcome. I would say, you know, since you have a place in your heart for Taos, uh, 
you know, it's not easy to get to, um, especially around that, you know, the holidays with weather and whatnot. But um, we will be in Taos for the last part of uh, December. And then if you are back on the East Coast in uh, late January, uh, let's definitely stay in touch. Or at the very least, um, you know, watch my socials. I'll be dropping all the information uh, for, like I said, this um uh, our off-Broadway debut um, in, in late January. So we'd love to see you there. Absolutely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow you now um, from my... Uh, I'm going to follow you, actually, just so I have everything in alignment. I'm going to follow you from my PR page, United Angels Dream. Uh, question... All right, so this is here's another reminder. This is something you wrote. Uh, t -t -t -t. All right. Um, I grew up in an uber cultured household where, where talking first grade, my parents dressed me as Salvador Dali for Halloween. So, of course, theater was a big part of our lives. They exposed me to plays, musicals, opera, ballet. I just always knew I wanted to be up there on stage for about five minutes again, way back in first grade. Here, here's where, where I found this very interesting. And my question to you is you had wrote, I debated being an astronaut, but then I heard I'd have to do math. And that was the end of that actress. It was, and I've never wavered since. So are you still disappointed by not, you know, about the math part and not becoming an astronaut or where do you sit with that? Or can you ever have a role being an astronaut and getting everything you ever wanted without having Ooh, to do math? I like math? that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wish I could just, you know, I wish I could go to the bank and, uh, you know, deposit money without having to <laughs> pull my fingers out and count. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an absolute wreck when it comes to math. I mean, I'm, was literally on the, you know, I was breaking the charts for English, you know, uh, language and arts uh, when it came to, you know, SAT, ACT, all that. But then when it came to math, I mean, forget it. I was like just drooling. I was a, ugh, I was a wreck and I still am. Um, so, yeah, if anything, I just wish I liked math because uh, I need it daily um, and, and, and uh, don't have it. Um but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, again, I, it's like, I can't go back to first grade and change. I mean, I have just always really listened to my own intuition and it's, um, I was, I felt very, very strongly from a very young age. This is what I was supposed to do. I mean, it was almost like, of it is akin to being gay or, or even being trans like you know people say like I just wasn't myself or you know like like for me to be anything but an actor was just denying what I truly am like I like I am whether I was actually actually performing or not I'm a performer on the Enneagram period hard stop mic drop the end I'm I'm that's who I am like if if no one's watching or listening then I don't really see any point in doing it you know what I mean like I live for an audience and so um so yeah I mean what can I say I I I was just following through with what I felt I needed to do. And I never looked, you know, I never even second guessed myself. Mm. I mean, in some ways I feel like I was really blessed because I just knew from very young age what I wanted it to be. Um, and, but it, you know, cause obviously people struggle, you know, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I also think those blinders, we're blinding. Like, I think I, um, there's so much more out there in the world that unfortunately I just couldn't see. And again, 
it's not fair to say, oh, if only I could tell my younger self to, no, like my younger self could not have heard that. Like all I could hear was acting, singing, dancing, performing, period. <laughs> uh, so it didn't matter. Um, but, you know, yeah, there's a lot more out there. And I just, uh, I was too young and, you know, f focused. <laughs> I was going to say stupid, but I was just focused really uh, to see anything else. Yeah, that feels true. Focused. I would never, and I don't use that word loosely, the word never, uh, see you as being stupid or naive. There's, um, there's an educated and enlightened balance in you and around you. And I believe the more experience you have in finding the beauty in the adventures of Naomi Grossman within yourself and how it translates and resonates and connects in this world, you're going to continue to grow in being unstoppable. And one of the things that came to me intuitively, it came to me in thought and I realistically see this is I would enjoy you um, playing Judy Garland. I believe you're so sophisticated and I'm, you know, whether, however it is of singing, we can always teach ourselves something just like what you're, what you did with yoga, but there really is a timeless, timeless um, way and, and, and a, a being your being in itself of who you are that, you can do, and I'm saying this from the heart, you can do yeah. anything, anything, just well, like what you did with yoga. Thank you. It's funny you should mention her. Um, I don't know that I'm doing her justice, but I do. She is a character in my new one woman show. And I do transform into her, actually. Um, I don't think I'm doing, like I said, quite the you know, impression that I, if, if I were to say be cast in a biopic, I, I would want to do a much better job. Um, this particular duty is a little drunk and, um, but is giving me some wisdom in, in the show. I am visited by, uh, three ghosts, um, who kind of give me relationship advice. Uh, <laughs> um, the three ghosts being, uh, Judy Garland, Marilyn Monroe, and my own personal girl crush, Lucille Ball. Uh, and, uh, you know, women who obviously have, uh, very fraught relationships with men and, um, you know, we're not defined by them. So, um, I, uh, I, I, I love that you, you picked up on that. And, um, like I said, I don't know that I'm doing her justice, but I do do her. I, I look like her, uh, the makeup and hair did a great job. And, um, yeah, I, uh, thank you. I, I have appreciate everything. <laughs> and I, I, you know, that's, that's part of the career I want. Um, I think I've got it, but at the same time, I'm, I, I, it goes back to actually your first question of where are we in time? Like in ser terms of like, do you like the way things are going in this, you know, this career? Um, I, <sighs> You know, I see, I see a lot of the kind of woke agenda, um, uh, trying to, uh, uh, listen, I'm all for inclusion, obviously, but I am concerned that we're starting to, well, destroy the art of acting when we limit actors to playing essentially themselves. Um, you know, I mean, it, you, you might ask yourself, like, would I even be cast in a role like Pepper right now? I don't, I don't know if I would. And, um, you know, I, I just think, you know, yes, I'm all for uh, differently abled people to be be cast, of course. But at the same time, I want. I want to see actors playing something other than themselves. Like I want to see, um, I want to see them transformed. I want to see them, you know, like 
we can watch we can watch actors be themselves at the on the late night talk show or or shoot on your show um uh being themselves anyway let's see i i want to see them be someone else that's the whole point of acting so i i am a little concerned by that direction we're headed um and and i personally um uh, you know, I'm excited by your comment about um, transforming <laughs> into someone else because that's what I set out to do. And I'm, I'm always bummed out when they say, "Oh, do nothing, just throw it away, be yourself." I'm like, "No, I don't want to be myself. If I wanted to be myself, I'd be on, I do reality TV. I'm someone else." <laughs> so. I don't know. That's my own <laughs> uh, soapbox. <laughs> Apologies. I appreciate that. And to let you know your answers uh, to the questions earlier, I derived that information from uh, the New Mexico Entertainment. And like I said, that was back in October of 2014. Gotcha. Gotcha. This came to me, so I'm going to read something here. However, Grossman is not just a prolific actress. She's also an incredibly talented producer and writer, having withheld the aforementioned roles in both her 2003 debut solo theater show, Girl in Argentina, Girl in Argentine Landscape, and in 2009's Carnival Landscape. Both Carnival Mm-hmm. Both received critical acclaim and latter enjoyed a twice extended sold out run. This was in, if memory serves me correctly, if I'm pronunciating it correctly, Shown Magazine um, is where I obtained that. And thank you for the addition um, in that reference. Sure. In all of this, this is what's coming to me to ask you. If you, let's say the, let's, you know, look at the industry were to shut down and we, and it's going to go independent and people will from now on no longer be dealing with movie production or film companies and they can use their cell phones or iPhones, whatever it is that they're doing. And it's going to go completely independent and, and we're going to only watch films that get distribution, could see them on Hulu, Netflix, whatever. Um, but we're going to change the industry and primarily films are going to nationally to internationally be only seen for the most part in their debuts at film festivals. That would change as a publicist. That would change the entire landscape as well as how media and articles and press is defined if it were to change in that direction would you be happy and at peace knowing that the world may only know you as pepper in the mainstream way that we see film and television or do you believe that if we were to go in that direction to where you could have unlimited resources as Naomi Grossman, have any role that you want or create the roles that you want for yourself, how would that sit with you? I mean, that's how I feel right now. I feel like you're saying, what would happen if we were in a world that, and, and you're like, but then you describe the world that we're actually in. I mean... At this point, yeah, most people know me for that particular role. And yet there are, you know, sky's the limit. We're not limited to that. There's a million other resources and platforms and um, projects. And, uh, and so I feel like that's, that's, that's the reality right now. And um uh, I mean, obviously, we're not limited to independent film, although we are now while we're on strike. Um, I don't know. You know, I'm not really great with uh, hypotheticals. I feel like um, I tend to take the uh, Byron Katie sort of uh, 
school book or uh, uh, rule book rather um, in terms of not really worrying about something until it's happened <laughs> I feel like a lot of we spend a lot of time uh, thinking about like what if this or that and then it never actually happens so it's like you've just wasted all that time and energy worrying about something that never even would happen so um, meh when it happens, call me. We'll we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how I get around m most concerns, honestly, is I just, I refuse to uh, worry about things that aren't real, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I th again, I'm not taking responsibility for any of this this is all her this is all byron katie who uh you know it, it sounds like you you seem very enlightened in which case you probably already got her on your uh, uh playlist but um you know it's all and she it's all you first ask yourself when confronted it with a some piece of drama like is it real and then you know and half the time the answer is no more than half the time um so yeah sorry i don't mean to <laughs> defer the question <laughs> no I, I appreciate you this is your time you're staging your mic naomi no apologies necessary yeah yeah <laughs> no well, you're right it feels like we all are living a, a spin-off season of our life and and what's happening in this world and I, I feel with this is you brought a lot of encouragement. You brought a lot of enlightenment, uh, being real and authentic and transparent. And I appreciate you for that. And with that, I would like to know, is there anyone that you would like to give a shout out to? Oh, gosh. Um, well, you know, honestly... <sighs> I mean, I mentioned before being a performer and if I, if, if there's no one watching, no one listening, like what's the point? And I really feel that way. I feel that the fans have really, I, I, I don't get me wrong. Even had I not had um, some, you know, commercial mainstream success, I'd still be, I'd still be performing for, <laughs> you know, whatever, however many hits I could get on YouTube, uh, which was obvious, which was, uh, paled in comparison to the various, you know, cats I was competing with uh, at the time. But I think, yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really indebted to American Horror Story and its fandom. And um, and so, you know, this, this new show, American Horror Story, that I keep mentioning, uh, which just had a nice run in L.A., um, completely sold out. And then, like I said, we'll be from here going to New Mexico and then New York. Um, I, it's, it's a love letter to them. And so I, uh, I think people really, they'll really love like getting to see my journey. The, you know, I, I know for a fact because I go to these comic cons and I see people queue up to see these totally uncurated Q and A's. And this is, curated like i have sought, thought through every word of this thing uh, you know i have labored over uh versus the uh versus the and you know and i picked the right one so um in any case i'm just excited to share the story you know pre-pepper post-pepper becoming pepper uh with the world i think uh i'm excited to share it there you know let's face it a lot of people only know me as this, you know, microcephalic grunter. And so the fact that I can carry a play for a full, you know, hour 20 is something. So um, anyway, I'm excited to share that with the world. And again, it's it's really it's a it's a thank you, if anything, um, for 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 being a fan, because for a long time it was just my mom. <laughs> and that was very lonely so thank you you are welcome and thank you in three words that i'm hearing over and over again with this blessing of having this opportunity with you naomi is purpose meaning and facts i'm going to repeat that purpose meaning and facts that's what i learned even more about you from this 
day. Hmm. I like that. Cool. Any closing <laughs> thoughts at all? Oh, no, I just, um, thank you for, for your message. Like I said, I, I was really like refreshed by that. Um, it's a great way to wake up and a great way to go to bed. And, and if we can spend all the time in between the two, uh, grateful, we'll be even better for it. So thank you for that. You are welcome. And then lastly, Naomi, anything that you want to plug in or drop before we head out for today? I mean, I, I mentioned the, um, my, my, uh, socials are Naomi W Grossman. Um, I'm verified. So, uh, everywhere, but X <laughs> anymore, I'm not paying for that, but, um, yeah, you'll see the blue check part to know it's me. I, uh, I go on, I do a live every Wednesday at, uh, 4 30 Pacific on TikTok, and then five o'clock on, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook and YouTube. And I, um, discuss with some lucky someone, uh, their digital collectible. I have a digital collection, AKA NFT collection, uh, that I've created called play with me, which I would uh, only encourage people to go, uh, check it out. It's, I know it's like, wait, what are you talking about all of a sudden? I've, we've been all like peace and love, gratitude and rainbows. And now all of a sudden I'm talking about NFTs, but, <laughs> uh, basically I would just say, if you're not familiar yet, go to the website app, dot variant that's v-r-y-n-t dot i-o sign up just signing up makes you eligible to win a free pack when i when i say pack i mean uh it's basically like mr potato head or like paper dolls where but instead of getting like the same ears nose mouth uh, as everyone you get a different Easter egg from my new show, American Horror Story. All pro proceeds of this go towards the show. So it's something that I've created inspired by fans art um, uh, to help support the show. Um, and uh, like I said, you every component pack is comprised of 15 various pieces. And then it's up to you, the creator, to just sort of drag and drop them uh, and create your own digital collectible. So like I said, uh, you can either win one by going to that website or, of course, you're welcome to buy one as well. Like I said, it all supports the, part of the, the show, so you can feel good about that. And uh, then, like I said, on Wednesdays, I go on my socials and uh, we discuss them. So that's, you know, something something fun I, I've managed to do to keep myself busy during the strike anyway. <laughs> I appreciate that. And you know what else you can do? You can mm. call me anytime. If you ever have any questions, we can talk privately. And if you ever want to come on and just be on just to go on because it helps you and we got great conversation and it's all about building relationships. I'm going to say that I'm extending out this branch, this connection to you because I would like to be more of an asset in any way that I can because I'm feeling this connection. And if this was not meant to happen, your intuition, your angels, your spirit guides, you know, it, it would not have happened. So thank you for knowing yourself and trusting yourself well enough to know that you're safe. You um, were going to be respected and that this, this was and is a mutual understanding and collaboration with us consciously and subconsciously. Oh, yeah. Well, and I believe that... <sighs> I I believe we get what we expect. And like I said, I go about life in a very sort of fearless manner. And so, yeah, when you reached out to me, say, and sit, and, and I we agreed to do this, there was never fear. Like, you know, you just said, you know, you agreed to do this. Like, you know, um, this, you know, this was a safe space and you trusted that. And, and of course it's a safe space. Like, but, but what's the worst that could happen to me? And now don't get me wrong. There are people that are have like a whole litany of things that, in their brains that could go wrong. Um, but like, I just don't even believe 
I don't, those things don't even cross my mind. Like, so, like I said, I think we get what we expect. And I, for whatever reason, knew in my heart that this was um, a good way to spend the half hour. And, um, you know, and I wasn't wrong. That's a huge compliment. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you, Naomi. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Anytime, anytime. Thank you to everyone who joined us today live on air with Stephen Quilco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. All great things, Naomi Grossman. N-A-O-M-I-W Grossman. G-R-O-S-S-M-A-N. This interview will re-air. Double check the schedule on the app or on power985.com. It's going to re-air all throughout the month. It will go, I would say, probably even into November. Um, I am repurposing a lot of my shows, uh, not only the, from the past, but also uh, repurposing by re-airing, you know, by request so that everyone can catch up on all the latest and greatest here on Power 98.5. If you happen to not feel like waiting and you want to go to any one of your favorite podcast channels, Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, Spotify, and or iHeartRadio, just type in Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco. You'll be able to pull up all the past and current shows. Thank you once again to everyone that joined us today uh, with my new favorite actress and human being and person, Naomi Grossman. And once again, all great things, Naomi Grossman. Grossman, head on over to her Instagram, Naomi W. Grossman. I've been learning not to speak so fast. Sometimes my brain wants to get it out real quick because I'm excited and I get those little tongue twisters. So I've been having fun slowing my brain and myself down a bit. Either way, unapologetically, no matter what speed you're moving at, just feel it, know what you're doing, make sure you're hearing, you're seeing, you're feeling, and you're being. Because if you go too fast, you can become numb. And if you go too slow, something just may pass you by. So find that nice, happy balance. Have a great day, everyone. Socials and let's connect.